We're live. 7.30, I'm a little late. My son had a soccer game, which worked out very well. They ended up winning for their school, and he scored a good shoulder goal. <laughs> kind of a header, but most of the shoulder is good. And uh, he had a couple other shots. They were a little off target. It's good stuff. So it was awesomeness. Um, I'm going to show you guys in a, in a minute. I'm going to show you a photo, the thumbnail photo. Sometimes guys can't see it. I'll show you a thumbnail photo of the um, 462 valve intake manifold, the adjustable one that I did. And I think actually that this thing probably started out as, I think it actually started at, Whoever has the aluminum lower portion. Might be, might be the 4.6 truck manifold, maybe, that had the aluminum base. I don't think it was a 5.4 because that won't have the, um, because that crossover distance will be different. And I'm pretty sure that the front of this crossover is one piece. So it must have been a 4.6 um, two-valve truck motor to start out with. And what we did was cut it apart. And then I, we had, I had some, uh, aluminum probably two inch bends put on this thing and so they bend and kind of go out we also did one that was straight up the straight up makes more sense um <coughs> excuse me the curve doesn't seem to do anything for the power or for the airflow but the the entry angle is a little bit better you know guys can argue but really for me the straight up and down just makes it a lot easier to adjust the runner length, which is why I did this whole thing to begin with. So when, when we get a few more people here, we'll take a look and see, I'll show you the, I'll show you what I'm talking about, but you know, I mean, there's no reason we, I guess there's no reason we can't look at it now. Let's see here. Bring this photo up. So we'll see. So this is the intake manifold that I'm talking about. You'd see it has two, those are both 75 millimeter Accufab throttle bodies. See, it's got the base on it. Um, looks like I have the <laughs> looks like I have the injectors um, wired down. Not ideal, but you know it still kind of works. And then I have a big um, crossbar basically connecting the two throttle bodies that just holds them in place. So when I do the my Super Richie drive by wire throttle activation, you can kind of see the cable on it over here that it doesn't want to pull them around because a lot of these things are just duct taped. You can see the duct tape here. The tubes are duct taped in place. I just made it so that I could, I had slip fit extensions so that I could raise this thing up. The other thing, if you'll notice in the back, it has a connection between the two plenum. So we can either run it connected or unconnected. And then I ran different lengths of tubing with radius entries in front of the throttle bodies. And then we could adjust the stack length. You know, you could put port stuffers in there to change the plenum volume. We're changing the plenum volume uh, effectively by the joiner at the back. We're doing that. We also tried joining them across the middle. <laughs> All kinds of silly stuff. And I'll show that again later on. So the people that get here late can, can take a look at that. But just what are you doing? Um, <laughs> celebrate the first super chat from just the 3V. I, ha I also did an intake manifold like that for the three valve. And I did an adjustable one like that. And then it, I actually turned in, made one that actually fit under the hood and drove around. And we had it on a car for a long time and ran it with a blower. It did all kinds of stuff and it worked well. Um, but on this one, the reason that I bring this up is I, I made this and it made it adjustable. And obviously, as you as we've talked about many, many times on this channel, when you make the runner length adjustable, you adjust the RPM where the thing wants to make power. But you also adjust the amount of power that it makes. So you're not just doing, okay, look, it makes 400 horsepower at 5,000 RPM or it makes 400 horsepower at 5,500 RPM or 6,000 or whatever. You're you're actually changing the power curve because you have these weird kind of cool sine waves that are happening on the power curve. And so if you can get it to happen just right at the right RPM with your cam timing and ported heads or whatnot, then you can have good things happen. It's pretty cool which is why I like testing a bunch of different lengths. We we ran some as much as probably, I don't know, 18 or 20 inches or something. And then all the way down to, I think the, the small, and I'm talking about just running like the manifold, the, the 
the head port is part of the runner length, but that stays fixed. We're not going to change that. We're not going to mill the head, at least the intake facing of the head to try to change the runner length. We're adjusting all that in the intake. And then I think the, the shortest one was probably four to six inches, which would be pretty short for a two valve, unless you're going to run lots of RPM with them. And we, we, we didn't really do that. I, I don't think we ran this thing more than, I don't need, I don't know if we even ever ran it to 7,000 RPM. I'd have to look back at some of the data and see how high, what the highest RPM we ran. Cause we, we, we've run them with, you know, pretty good ported uh, PI heads and also the trick flow heads, which, and ported trick flow heads, which are a, a good head. So uh, of the two valve heads, those are pretty good. And then with cams in them and stuff. So I, I'm thinking 7,000 or less. So we made the intake adjustable. So it obviously has enough flow rate. It's two 75 millimeter throttle bodies, which is more than enough flow rate for to feed this kind of power output. You know, you're talking about something that's less than, at its best, was less than 500 horsepower NA. And so it worked out really well. But the reason I bring it up is because look at the design and look at the modular <laughs> design. And you can see that this lends itself very well to simply adding another set of cylinders. So all we have to do is instead of, you know, four runners on each side, there would just be a fifth runner. <laughs> there would be, there would essentially be this intake manifold, the two valve V10 manifold is what I'm thinking about. So making a custom intake manifold for a V10, we have uh, the V10 manifold is a, the two valve anyway, is aluminum. And the three valve would be a little more complicated because it would be, um, it's composite. So we'd have to figure that out. I might be able to do an insert or something for it, but we'll see. But on the two valve, it lends itself to doing this design exactly. So we would just cut the flange, you know, cut the runners off the crossover portion of it, get rid of all that. And then we could either go, have them go straight up so that we could make them, we could make a super mega sky Ram or a space Ram or a SpaceX or whatever. Um, you know, we could do that sort of thing. And then also make the runner length, the right runner length if we were to ever get camshafts in them. Because I would guess uh, uh, probably the the Ford guys, the developers, the engineers did their homework. And the manifold that they made is probably pretty good with the camshafts that they made in terms of making a good amount of average power. Um, you know, a lot of times we can shorten the runner length and make it a little bit more peak power. But with a stock cam, it's almost always comes with a trade-off. So, you know, maybe we could lose a little bit of torque and gain a little bit of power, but that's why we test. It's all cool stuff. But but this design with, with an extended plenum and another runner on each side, pretty simple to do, and this lends itself well to that. And so I think that that's probably what the design would be. This was a simple tube with a part of the tube cut away and then a flat section, and then the section had holes in it, and then it had runners in it. On this one, I think I use like radius air horns in it, but anymore, I just go to the muffler shop and take a piece of, take a couple short sections of two inch tubing, um, have them swedge it on their machine, and have a flare it basically, and then put those in the holes and weld them. And then, you know, so that they're flat and then away we go. And then those all line up with the ports. And then all we have to do is, um, then I have a bunch of tubing lengths. So I'll make eight, you know, two inch ones and eight, four inch ones and eight, eight, six inch ones or whatever. And then what I'll do is we just um, always flare one end, you know, so we have a slip fit tube and they just, they just, they're, they're just stackable. And then you could do a one inch section or whatever, or an odd section, like a three inch section or something. And then you could combine all of these to make the different lengths. If you want to change it in one inch lengths, just to see what's happening. Um, one inch doesn't change it a lot normally, shifts the sine wave a little bit. Um, I, I should probably show that on a video because I've, I've run that testing a lot and we can see what the difference, what the change is in the sine wave, it's pretty cool. But if we, you know, if we did that for a V10, that would be a fairly easy deal to do, especially given the original factory intake manifold. And those are available cheap. Even if I left one stock and bought another one, which is a hundred bucks or 200 bucks or whatever, and then just cut it and welded it. And then I could use the plenum that I have and extend it or make another plenum, you know, two throttle bodies. And, and really what I would do if I redid this, if I made new plenums for it, 
This one has the, the one thing I didn't like is this one had the throttle body flanges were fixed to the plenum. So they would they would orient the throttle body only in one way. Now I think that on this Ford it had a a four hole pattern that we could rotate the throttle bodies, but it doesn't do any good if you can't get the the um, linkages in line so you could pull them at the same in the same direction. So we you would want to make it so that the throttle bodies can always be sitting with like the throttle linkage at the bottom or at the top, and so you can have one pull for both of those. So they could open them, you could sync them and open them the same. If you did it right, you can hook a bar to it and that, that way it's rigid. And so they do open up exactly the same for me. You know how I do it. I'll just wire them both together and pull it. As long as for the dyno, it only matters. Like I'm not looking at throttle response or that they open exactly the same, like at low throttle angles. All I care about is that can we pull it far enough to get them both at wide open throttle? Because for the dyno test, that's all that we're looking at. And the answer normally is yes. Or, and, and then we adjust it until we can't do that. But a single bar, and that's why after doing these and learning from this, what I do is I just make the a throttle body flange a flat flange with a tube. And then I'll connect that tube to the plenum, to another tube on the plenum with a silicone coupler. That way I'm, and, and we just clamp it in place. That way I'm free to rotate the throttle body however I want. And, and, this is not as much of a problem, which is another reason that I like the straight up and down um, runners, because then the throttle bodies are always oriented the same. When I put the arc in these, as we go farther and farther away, it changes what the throttle body is doing. And so it changes our, it, it makes our th throttle linkage a little bit more problematic. And so having it be straight makes it easier, but also having the throttle bodies adjustable, their position adjustable makes life easy too for a lot of other stuff as well. So that's what I'm thinking. Um, so our poll will be I employ this throttle by design for the 6.8 liter V2 valve V10 flip forward. Should I or shouldn't I? Does he or doesn't he? So for guys maybe that are just getting here, this is the de design that I'm talking about. So to, um, it's a dual plenum, dual throttle body, crossover in the back. We can run it with a crossover or not. And then you could see the runners in there, slip fit, adjustable. It has the factory base, basically, that's been, we've uh, had tubes welded to it. And then it's been, you know, port matched. And when I say port matched, I'm, I'm doing the air quotes. <laughs> so it's been port matched. Um, and so this design with just, a, you know, you could see one, two, three, four. That's a V8 because there's four on each side. If there's just another set of runners back here and the plenum's a little bit longer, then that's a v that's a v10 manifold you could add another set if it's a v12 but we don't have that <laughs> but but a v10 uh, this lends itself very well to that in fact i probably could just extend what's there and make it or make new ones you know like i said either way it's not making those plenums is not really that big of a deal so uh, let me know you guys will let me know in the in the um poll what you guys think about what's going on you know, you know how we do it. <laughs> so we'll see what people got going on. Squirrel, Admiral. I knew Admiral would be here. Just talking about modular stuff. My Mustang might be running. Cool. Send me a video clip or something if you get it running. Cross RAM is also possible. I finally, Scott, I finally caught you live today. Notifications have been working the last couple of days. I wonder what's going on. Just a three valve. Thank you very much. Again, looks like two D16 manifolds. It does kind of look like that, huh? The crossbar was to hold the the um, throttle bodies in place. Mike, ready for those questions I talked to you about earlier? What, which ones are that? I'm ready. 
The rear is connected to change the um, Hemholtz resonance. Does having dual plenums affect the power due to different resonance? Yes, it, it definitely does. I, I uh, Shadow Ops, I also did this on an LS. The very first one I did was actually on a 5 liter Ford. Just a 3V. My 3V has a Kenny Bell for a manifold. Actually one that has a spinny thing on it. <laughs> it's probably the best manifold design. How about YouTube? Straight up and down with a plenum in the middle. Slide the tube like a trombone. <laughs> there you go. Uh, no brakes. Having the, um, I tested this and I remember talking to the guys from Edelbrock about it when they, when they came out with their, um, their cross ram deal, which was cool. Uh, it's, it's very heavy. <laughs> it's, very, it's complex, but it's very cool. And I was talking to him about it. I'm like, um, so did you guys try, uh, try it without a crossover? They're like, yeah. I said, it works better with a crossover. I said, did you, did you try it with the rear crossover and the middle crossover? And they're like, yeah, we did. I'm like, yeah, I, I've been there. <laughs> I showed them some pictures of the stuff. They're like, oh, yeah, you've done this before. I said, yeah, um, this is really, really cool. Though I like this. This is pretty awesome. I like that design. It probably wouldn't fit in the, in the vehicle. No, this this one wouldn't. The What I do or what I did with this, like on the three valve to make the, make the, the actual one. And then the same thing. I made a two valve manifold too that I have in my um, project redhead stepchild for muscle Mustangs and fast forwards that, that allowed me, it was a non PI one, which is <laughs> limited market. Um, I did I didn't make one for the PI, not that it would fit under the hood, but for the non PI one I did, I made one for the three valve actually. So I used these to design what runner, what runner length I wanted and then did that with a manifold that would actually fit under the hood. And no brakes, the the flap between the crossover. Actually, the Ford had that on their 4.6 truck manifolds on their 4.6 2V truck intakes. A twin GT45 turbo is going to have bad boost response on an LQ4 with 862 heads and an LS3 cam. Um, that's like 15 or 1600 horsepower were the turbos. So a GT35s would support 1000 horsepower probably. Maybe a little bit more than that. So how much are you trying to make? MMR makes adapters for a 5.4 four valve to run Coyote intakes. I'm currently running the boss on my 5.4 four valve. It would be nice to see an updated intake shootout. Has anybody tested that to, to know that it works? I mean, have the, somebody's got to have power numbers on it, right? Widens usable power band. It works with VBT. In your earlier live stream, someone asked about changing the LA3 oil pump and changing the cam. They are failure prone if the engine has very many miles on it and isn't bolted back in the exact spot. On the LA3, they're problematic. Why does it have to be bolted in, into the exact spot? Isn't it keyed onto the crank the way that a LS is? James, your Turbo TBS is, uh, S, double S, TB double S is running. Instead of twin GT35s, what a single, a single world would work fine. What kind of power are you trying to make? I have 80 pound injectors, so you're wanting a thousand horsepower. You're only going to get a thousand horsepower with 80 pound injectors if you're running race gas. You, you won't make it on E85. <laughs> James just said the same thing. Burns, Burnsy. Mike, uh, oh, you have the 555 big block in the Chevelle. It's a show car. I use it for cruise night, but don't race it. 13 to 1, AFR 345, tricked out by Alan Johnson Racing. The cam's a solid roller. So all that sounds good so far. Uh, 
forgot to mention the 544V is in my 99F350. Comp cams, all forwards, billet 425 at 6500. Nice. How much do you think to 300 SV turbos? I don't, I'm not familiar with that turbo. Is it a, is it a Garrett or Borg or something? Does it have a compressor map I can look at? If I can look at the compressor map, I can tell you. Cords is in the house. Oh, is it not cords? That's right. It's not cords, right? It's, it's something else. I've been pronouncing this wrong the whole time. Can we put two P30s, P30 on an LS and see what it does? What are P30s? Two ninety three hundred and fifty. Yeah, that's a real big NA cam. Two fifty at fifty, roughly six fifty. With my question is, I should continue using the single plane forty five hundred. Even with a two fifty cam on that, um, didn't you say that this thing was fairly high compression too? Because that's going to make it even more, might make it a little more detonation prone. Yeah, thirteen to one. Although two fifty is probably still big enough for that motor. And it's a Vi 55. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't think, I think with your displacement, Mike, I, I don't think you'd be happy with a dual plane. I don't think there's a dual plane that will support that. So it's got to be a single plane. Uh, Scott, you're missing, you're missing one of the calculations there. 80 times 2 times 16 equals 1280. That's what it'll make NA. Then we go times 0.85. Then we go times 0.75. So you need to multiply 1,088 times 0.75. The 0.85 only tells you what it does under boost because it's richer. That's going from 13 to 1 to 11 and a half to 1. You forgot one of your multiples. Richard, you have a do doppelganger in Canton that works in the hospital in radiology. My friend picked me up. I said, Richard, <laughs> to the phone call. <laughs> nice. I got the opportunity to modify 3.8 and 4.0 GT3 intakes to be used on air-cooled engines for a company that rhymes with a ringer. I did a lot of them. The intake design is common plan with vacuum flaps. Cool. <laughs> Jose, you were, you were scrolling the chat? I like that. Uh, Andy, did you see the did you see the picture the second time I showed it? Uh, let's let's see. Still, still scrolling back. <laughs> there we go. Can we ever expect to see another guy's episode with a Ford 400 with boost? I don't have a 400 Ford anymore, so I'd have to get another one. Seems to follow that if you're adding two more cylinders, what's a few extra cylinders between friends of E16? <laughs> then you got to weld blocks together and stuff. Oh, Wizard, he runs and he does bikes. Cool. I have all things except for coolant hoses, so you're balling. Nice. What was supposed to be the purpose or advantage of the V10 or the V8? It's a modular deal, so they, they could make it theoretically uh, inexpensively, and then they could make it bigger, and they, for truck applications, for towing applications, they wanted bigger motor that makes more torque. The throttle bodies on this setup are 75s. Uh, Four-wheel drive, you use V-band flanges to rotate the throttle bodies. You can, but the 
the tube and the silicone hose are are really easy. What happens with the split plenum dual throttle body intake with throttle bodies opened different amounts, like three quarters on one and full on the other? You would get different um, power and air fuel on the different sides of the motor. <coughs> unless, <laughs> possibly unless they were joined. Because you might have at the power level with one open all the way and one open three quarters of the way you might see that both plenums actually have um, uh, 100 kPa or 98 or 99, whatever the amount is. What's the max valve lift on a peanut port head? Um, I, you mean the maximum you could ever do on it if you modified it? Yeah, James, people do ask the same questions, but the thing that I like about that is I, I already know the answer. Uh, any pluses for increasing the plenum volume on an NA motor? I haven't seen that do anything except the example that I bring up, which is that 462 valve where changing the plenum volume actually showed some power, but only did it way down low. I haven't seen, I haven't seen big changes from power from changes in plenum. Do you run boost with your slip fit manifolds? I haven't on the on the 462 valve. I did after we made the motor, I mean, made the manifold and welded it all up. Then we ran boost on it. PI and non-PI is power improved and non-power improved. It's Non-PI is the early stuff. And then PI is 99 and up on the Mustang. Fixing the end play on my crankshaft today turns out the cap overhangs the block side by at least five thousandths. It's a lot. 32 valve intake from a 97 Lincoln would benefit from this. Yeah, I have, a, that's a four valve motor, but I have made one of these for a four valve application also. Wasted wages. You have, do you have a six eight going together with lightning pistons and turbos? I also, for guys that are interested, might have some more um, superchargers for sale, uh, or I might. The guys from Acufab might. They've been going through a bunch of stuff, and he's digging out a bunch of his stuff, and he's might have um, some lightning blowers and some various things that. So I'll let you guys know if he's got some stuff for sale. Somebody wants to do a you know, a, um, one of these adapter deals like the Tom DeMuse did. Jeremy, the veins in the pump will wear mate to the, where they mate to the housing. They're on the same spot that we were finding. Then you end up with low oil pressure. Reloading, you uh, you do want it even. So if you can if you can do it in the lathe and make it even, that would be good. Cordis. So okay, so it's not cords. <laughs> not like the jeans or the pants that people used to wear. P thirty B sixteen intakes. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm hip on the P thirty stuff because I <laughs> I wrote a couple of books on it, but I didn't know that we were referencing uh, the B series Honda stuff. James, the uh, TBS made 837 with a bad tune. What's it? Well, we don't expect a bad tune from you, so what's the deal? The S300 SV came off of a DT466 diesel six-cylinder board warner. Yeah, I, I've not tested one of those, and I've not seen a map on them that I can remember. Uh, 
Taurus and porpoise rhyme. <laughs> it's a stretch. Yeah, James, me too. Two GT45s would be responsive on a V10. I think they're probably way oversized for a V10. Well, a V10 is like 300 horsepower, right? What one of them would probably do more than enough. Show me the throttle body for a V10. Well, the throttle bodies that are on the picture that I just showed you a little while ago <laughs> are the ones that I will run on the V10. So we'll show you that photo again of the, this is the V8 manifold. Dual throttle bodies. Those are 75s, but I could make that if I'm making that flange again. If you'll notice, these are just EGR spacers for the, uh, for the, the five liter four, because that's what I had. And these are AccuFab 75 millimeter throttle bodies. Um, I could put whatever, I could put 202 millimeter throttle bodies on there from, from fast or whatever, or two 125s <laughs> from AccuFab. But, you know, this is this is already more than enough to make, you know, I think this thing was making, like I said, the Yuzu was around 400, but the best one was, was around 500. So that's more than a throttle body. <laughs> What changed on the PI? Um, compression, cylinder head, intake manifold, and camshaft. That's about the new 5.4 Coyote intake shield as my engine's not so stable, low RPM, I'm wondering. I don't know what the stable thing is, have a leak or something in it, but the Boss intake manifold is not a good intake manifold for low speed power. The regular Coyote or the Cobra Jet or the late model Coyote are all way better than the, the Boss for low speed power because I've tested those. A Nissan SR20 DE turbo build, please. <laughs> I do like those. But I've never even had my hands on one. I've only ever seen them. Um, Ernie, who used to work at West Tech, his wife had one in her, in her very, very cool 510. Have you ever done a test on adverse effect on horsepower with a hotter intake? I've done intercooled versus non-intercooled. That's a pretty dramatic effect on. And then I've also done tests where we've run ice water versus not ice water. And and cold um, cold air is, uh, is much better. The twin bore Cobra style has great drivability compared to the big oval Whipple. Big throttle bodies um, have a problem with low speed snappiness or response rate because on a bigger throttle body, a very small throttle percentage opening means a lot of airflow. And so it tends to be kind of jumpy. So factory throttle bodies are designed to improve drivability. It's just that a twin bore Cobra throttle body doesn't flow nearly as much as the big single oval blades. Wizard, I have a 79 or an L79327. Nice. Straight out of a 65 vet. We won't let you do testing on it, but have to get it to you from Ohio. Maybe pick it up at the car farm. I've already run that motor. I mean, I, I thank you for the offer, but I already built one of those and we already ran it. So I know what they do. You can take a look up. I ran the DZ302, the 365 horse 327, the 375 horse 327 the 70 LT1, the 71 LT1, and then all of the, after I ran the solid lifter cam stuff, I wanted to run all the hopped up hydraulic, hydraulic lifter versions. So the L79, the L46, and the L82, I ran, I built all of those motors and ran them too, so we know what those did. The L79 did really well. I like those motors. That was GM's 
most popular um, over-the-counter camshaft. They sold more of those than anything. My three valve has twin 62 millimeter throttle body, so 124 millimeter total. Uh, twin 62s flows different than a single 124. If you do the surface area. Uh, anyone know of an EQ4 351 Windsor cam heads maps up like a like a lift or duration limit where the stock tune reaches its limit? The if if you can, you mean you want it to like self adjust with the mass air meter? It's not going to do that very well. If you but you can go in and tune it, and an EQ4 can tune a much bigger cam than you're talking about there. I had on my, on my Mustang, I had um, Trick Flow high port heads. I had that 224, 232 cam, which is mid five, 500 lift, 550, 540, 560 lift, um, a variety of different intake manifolds on a blower, all that stuff. And we, and then we ran it all with an E4. To keep the stock tune happy while passing smog. Yeah. I don't want to get involved in that. I thought you were asking about tunability. Single planes, I'll stick with a 4500 4, or 4150 for the street. Carb is to 1200. I, you're you're going to be making a lot less power with that camshaft. but And I don't think you need a 1200. But if you're going to do a 4150, I still think you're probably going to want a 1000. Coyote Boss 302 and table mount on the 544 valve with adapters. Yeah, we, we got that. It's just that that Boss 302 intake manifold is a short runner intake manifold. And I'm also curious to see how the adapters, how bad they hurt power. Any good street or truck LS cams for sale? I do have some. So send me an email and I've got some stuff. Uh, Burn says he's tried different displacement um, plenums as well and not had uh, not had power changes. What's the best distributor for setting up multi-party EFI on an old, 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 older engine? I'm getting ready to start reworking my 78 F-150 with a 400. We use an MSD because it plugs in. And for using a an aftermarket ECU, then you get a lock distributor. Uh, Tom, I was going to let you know about the blower stuff because I figured you would have customers that would want some of that. Uh, Andrew, I don't understand your question about FE engines. Jeffrey, our 500 plus fleet of V10s have thousands of idle hours each. They're F550s and the average weight of 12,000. So do they sit and idle a lot? What, what what are they doing when they're idling? What, why are they idling for so long? On the V10... Would you get the same boost in compression by combining the non-PI long block with PI heads? I don't know that they made a non-PI and a PI version of the V10. I think that they only did a PI version of the V10. Somebody correct me if I haven't done the history on that, but I think that that's the case. PI cams on the non-PI heads work surprisingly well. Yeah, you don't have to have, those don't go together. I mean, <coughs> they did from the factory, but that doesn't mean anything. One's a 550 lift cam, one's a 500 lift cam. How much more injector is needed for methanol? It's the stoic value of, the stoic value of methanol is, a, is about half of what um, gasoline is, I think. What throttle body we're talking about in the pole? The oh, 
shouldn't say throttle body design. It should say intake design. <sighs> That's me. I don't know why people are talking about throttle bodies. <laughs> it should say intake design. James, I haven't ever done anything with the 1UZ. I, I would like to. I like those Toyota motors. Just came home with an 04 Tahoe. Yeah, 122,000 miles. It's just getting broken in. Richard, 32 on the top and 34 on the second ring. Too much gap? No, we've run that much. Austin, I don't know what the I don't know what the retainer to seal clearance is on a big block off the top of my head on, on a peanut port here. I don't remember. I haven't had one in front of me in a long time. You can get the idle tune perfect in 15 minutes. <laughs> That seems like a fairly short amount of time. Uh, T, when's the trip to Florida? I don't know yet. It should be pretty soon. It's got to get warm there so the snakes can come out. At what horsepower level do you believe a fast LSXR 102 becomes restrictive? I, I don't think it's a power level. I think it's an RPM level. I've run fast on, we ran one on the 495 inch motor and I can look and see, I know that the, the big single plane, the big single plane from mast made more power than the fast did, but the fast was better through again, through the vast majority of the curve, just like it is on a six liter or a five liter or a four, four, eight or, or any of those. So it still works fairly well. It's not a power level. Like I said, it's, it's gotta be an RPM thing. Let me see. Head test. Feed master. See if I can find Rodex mast. LRM versus EFI. I'm trying to look up and see if I... I know we ran that test. Can't find the data right now. I take that back. No, when I ran the fast and the mast, <laughs> fast and the mast, when I ran that, um, we ran on a 468. 468 stroke card that was making 700 and something. 18, 17. Let's see what the difference is here. So the, to give you an idea, this is a 468 inch motors, you know, 11 and a half or 12 to one big cam in it, um, ported fast heads or yeah, mast heads, I should say, um, CNC LS3 mast heads. So it made 761 with the, the, that split CNC carb intake manifold and it made 732 with the fast LSXR, so LSXR, yeah, and 102 millimeter throttle body. The crossover was 5,900. So the, the fast made more power than the single plane up to 5,900. And then the single plane made more. And, and quite honestly, that that combination could use a bigger throttle body if they, if they would have had a bigger throttle opening in that fast. 
It's a big motor. Uh, fossil fuels. Did they they made a non PIV ten? So we don't want that. I thought that they just made um, PI and three V ones, but. 90, 97 to 99 V10s were not in PI. Okay, cool. Uh, hot mess. I've never heard of any ring manufacturer wanting uh, 8 thousandths per inch of bore. I've never even heard of that. The different castings in 4.6 and 6.8 liter two valve heads is mainly to remedy the spark plug problem. The 9799 V10 intake port shape is identical to the 5.4 non PI. Same goes for the 2000 up PA. Okay. So I want a 2000 up two valve then. Uh, Caleb, I have BTR Beehive Springs. How high can I rev it? Well, you only have a 212, 224 cam. So it's going to make peak power <laughs> well before its effect, its its maximum RPM range. You're going to be making peak power at like 6,000 RPM or less. And it will easily rev there. Those are my cam specs. It's a truck Norris cam. That's nice, except a truck Norris cam is not 224 on the exhaust. It's 220X. Uh, hot mess, I, I believe you. I just have never heard that. I've never seen any ring package that I've ever opened up tell me to run 8,000s per inch of bore. I've never even heard of that. Maybe, maybe, maybe top fuel stuff. Maybe that ring material has a lot of expansion rate. Forgive me, I'm, I'm jumping in here. Are you going for a Mustang that sounds like a Viper? No, not not at, at all. We're just talking about intake designs, more so to run one on the on the engine dyno. I just want to, since I can make an intake manifold, it's something that I can do. Uh, I can't make cylinder heads. <laughs> um, I can't make a camshaft. I can tell them what I want, but I can't do that. And right now, I guess technically I can't make an intake manifold because I have to have somebody do the TIG welding. Burns had to walk the dog. We took our puppies out for the first time out in the real world. They got to go see a soccer game today because they, they had all their shots. It was very exciting. You're going to get a real treat when we get to go out into the wilderness. Wilderness. <laughs> oh, hiking trails. It's not like we're going to be attacked by cougars. Uh, Brandon, take the lightning blower and add two ports. That actually sounds like a cool idea. Because I think Mahovitz has a lightning manifold and a blower that would be interesting because then we could put a Kenny Bell on it with an inner core I'm thinking of making a 3D printed plenum to run some ITBs. So if you if you have an IR manifold, why are you adding a plenum to it? Yeah, the puppies were just <laughs> beside the first time I well, we walked them around a little bit in the backyard with uh, their harnesses and leash, but it's first time being, you know, out at all. They've uh, escaped into the front yard, but we, they were quickly snatched up, but that's about it. So they got to go over to the school and 
walk around with people and uh, there were other dogs there and got to watch soccer and it was find all kinds of sticks to chew on and stuff. Uh, a lightning blower is not going to, it would definitely feed a stock two valve because a stock two valve doesn't make very much power. And I think we've made, I, I've certain, I, I'm sure we've made four or 500 at the tire or something like that, maybe with a lightning blowers, something like that. I wonder if they're as good as St. Bernard puppies. Puppies are all are always good. I I uh, thinking man, I I brought my girl that I wanted to pick up with me. Are you trying to turn a dog into a unicorn? Now everyone's trying to think uh is gonna think an excursion V10 is worth seven three money. Only if they have a super richy intake on it. Is a lightning blower a, a 112? Is it like the 03 Cobra blower? It's not an M90, right? Caleb, you should put 80 pounders in it. Eighty pounders would get you seven hundred on the eighty-five. It would get you 700 wheel horsepower in the 85 too. <laughs> Role play. She she's already so enamored of the puppies. It's fantastic. Have you run Blueprint 195 aluminum heads on a small block Chevy? No. I'd have to go back and look and see what some of the crate motors that we got. Because the all the editors get the crate motors, <laughs> even though they never do any of the work, <laughs> the actual dyno testing. Um, but they're the guys that the manufacturers send all the stuff to. So but I've, I've run a few Blueprint motors with aluminum heads on. I have to look and see if they have 195s. And I haven't tested, I don't think I've compared them to anything though. Uh, turning right, can you send me your full build list for a 496 big block? I don't have that. The, the videos have all the pertinent information on a 496 build with, with different power levels and stuff. Um, on your 544 valve, if you want to spend real Garrett money, you could get something that's responsive and can satisfy that power level. Otherwise, if you're going to buy an inexpensive one, you're going to need, um, if all you need is 800 flywheel, you might get that with a on that motor with a GT45, but a 7875 will definitely do that. Going for a pump gas 496 for the 67 Chevelle. The, if you look up the 496 that we did, if you just put good heads on it, um, we like the airflow research stuff. It works really well. And then that that uh, 255, 262 blower can that we run in there is good. There are other ones that will do that. But for something that's mid 600s, um, that's a good combination. And then a single plane, a, a 454R or something like that. I usually make them 10 to 1, like a 18 to 22 cc dome piston, some kind of forge rod. Yeah, fossil fuels. I thought it was a 112 on the on the lightning. Before I hop off, I have to personally thank you for all the LS content. I had people complaining about the LS content because they said, oh, we were, you were supposed to give us the 8.1. Where are the blueprint engines machined and assembled? They have big facilities. Blueprint's a huge. The blueprint like performance stuff is a really small portion of what the what the big company does. Uh, 
Uh, Caleb, I wouldn't listen to that nonsense. I think, oh, <laughs> Burns telling you the same thing. There's not a number where stock ring gap is okay. The reason being is that you don't know what that ring gap is. Unless you take the motor part, you have no idea what it is. Is it 10? Is it 50? Is it 17? What is it? You just don't know what it is. So there's no way to know if it's good or not. Factory ring gap has a range. And <laughs> some, some are tight, some are not. I have a four bolt main 454 in my shop if you're interested. <coughs> Those are pretty easy to find in the wrecking yard. All the Gen 5 and Gen 6s are all four bolt stuff. I've seen you run similar heads with that similar casting, but couldn't find those specifically. What brand fuel injectors do you run? The DECA 80s are what I run. The, the 80s that I have actually came from Excel, but they're probably all coming from the same manufacturer, I would imagine. Shadow Ops is out. Cobra and lightning blowers can never be in the same conversation. They can't. Is that because the lightning is superior in every way? <laughs> so we're doing a search. Uh, lightning eaten. We have the ability, knowledge, expertise, and genuine Eaton replacement parts to correctly rebuild your Eaton 112 supercharger in your second gen SVT Lightning. Yeah, that's kind of a funky inlet on the on the Lightning. I think that the um uh what is this? I don't I didn't ask you to do that. Cobra Eaton Supercharger. I sure like the inlet better on the Cobra. A 2.65 would be good, huh? Man, those blowers are not cheap. Pearl Drive is out. It's smoky in my house. I <laughs> got my air compressor are welded up. GT500 was a 122. Uh, do you have any EV112, 120s, or 160s? Did the Ford GT get the Lightning engine? That's <laughs> <It's> definitely different. <laughs> Deutschworks and Siemens. Yeah, those are good. Would you recommend a blueprint crate motor for someone just putting a Fox body back on the road? Yes. Or you could just go get a one from the wrecking yard. Terry, you are late because it's it is almost time. We're gonna close our poll at 87%. Yeah, I should. And I made a mistake. I was not saying intake. I said throttle body. <laughs> Weak. Although I thought I explained it several times. Have you ever seen improvements in step headers? I haven't seen uh, a step header power gain from just the step because I've never had a custom header made that allowed us to do that only. Usually, when I tried one header that was stepped and one was not, 
there was also some other kind of change, uh, a change in primary length, which we know changes the power, the change in collector design. Was the Navigator motor aluminum? The Navigator motor is not aluminum, so the the Ford GT didn't get a Navigator motor. <clears throat> That's a little bit of an oversimplification, I think. And as a previous Ford GT owner, I take exception to that. You say Eaton M90s and Rush M90s can't be in the same conversation. They can be in the same conversation. I'm always happy to speak about both of them. I'm just saying that I'm pretty sure that they flow different amounts. The um, And not the Eaton M90, specifically the, the M90 that is used on the 3800. That M90 is not the same as the one that people are saying are making 500 at the tire um, on, the, on the Roush V8. Because I'm pretty certain that the that the 3800 one will not do that. Richard, if you need custom headers, no, I don't need custom headers. I don't. I don't. I don't have custom header money. Uh, Fiend, I managed to get a hold of a single plane torquer intake for a Ford 400 that I plan on using in my turbo 400 build for racing at the Mint 400 next year. Cool. I've been actually watching The Last Dance with um, Michael Jordan and the Bulls. Pretty good. I got my 3800 stack care box and it doesn't do the blah, doesn't do it, doesn't do it enough. Yeah, Bob, they did have that one V10 that was in the, was that the GT90 that, no, I think that was something else, but they did it. They did a, an aluminum V10. I just ordered Dynatech step headers for my 71 Camaro. So I guess I'll find out. Yeah, if you'll you'll find out if you directly compare them to something else. If you just put them on and the motor makes power, did it do that because you, you got all the other things right? The dogs are quite a bit bigger now. If you had my money, if you had both dollars of my money. The GT90 were V6s welded together. They were aluminum V6s though, right? Problem is the rotor packs on all those GM M90s are worn out. I've had people tell me that, oh, that, that blower just worn out. Well, it still, it still makes the power that it's supposed to, um, at, at all of the different prescribed like boost levels and it still makes the boost. So what part of it is worn out? Uh, what about the Dodge V10? I haven't, I've only ever seen one of those.
Carl, you're changing other stuff too. I know that's always a way. It's Milo. He's walking perimeter. <laughs> that means um, my wife and her family are back from eating. Instead of going to eat with my wife and her family, I came up here to be with you guys. See? See, that's what I'm talking about. That's dedication. Yeah, I just um, run the run the blower, spin the blower up to speed, and then just throw like Teflon in there. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, oh, we have been here an hour and five minutes. <sighs> now you know we're on the second floor. <laughs> Thank you guys all for showing up. Now we'll be back in the morning, or morning ish, let's say. <laughs> I have to do uh, trading, and I and I'm finishing i've already started editing the 8.1 liter video the cam video so that will be done tonight and i hopefully I'm, i want that posted in the morning tomorrow so i'm gonna um i'll check my email first <sighs> and i know it's time to go i will see you guys all tomorrow bear 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 bear